Good morning children. Welcome back to our English class. So today we are going to learn a wonderful topic which is your all time favorite topic and that is story writing. So now children why this topic is so interesting the reason is we all know how to cook the stories in our minds in our thoughts whenever we talk with our teachers or with our friends or with parents or relatives right. However we don't know how to write it in a professional way. So children don't worry today I'm going to teach you on how to draft a wonderful story writing for your writing skills. So before we could go ahead I would request you to please take a pen and a book and make sure that you are going to note down all the important points which your teacher is going to discuss today. So without wasting the time we will go to the next slide. Now what is a story writing? So now children, a story is basically a narrating of real or imaginary events involving real or imaginary people. It means we are going to come up with some stories in our mind, right? With some imaginary events and in which we can also involve some imaginary people. But however, while doing this, we make sure that we are going to entertain our readers, right? And we are also going to give them a message. So whenever we are telling a story to someone, we should make sure that we are going to give them a wonderful message, which is in the form of a moral of the story, right? So this is what a story is all about. So let us read what is a story. So a story is basically a narrating of real or imaginary events involving real or imaginary people a story is generally designed to entertain and or send a message across right now children how to write an effective and interesting story so yes children let us go through a few points and understand how to do that now the first thing is character of the story now children the character of the story it could be people, animals or even non-living things. But you have to imagine that they are human beings and you have to talk to them and behave like human beings. So this is how the character of the story is all about. You could imagine that in your story you have a king okay, with whom you are talking. You could uh, make sure that your character of the story is a cat and you are talking to a cat. Or it could be an alarm clock as well so children depends on what kind of a story you are writing so accordingly you have to change the character of the story right now developing a story from an outline now the first thing is uh, your teacher will be giving you an outline of the story now how will you actually understand what is the story all about? Now let us go to the first point. First thing, read the outline of the story carefully. Okay. And understand what the story is all about. Yes, children. First thing is you have to read the entire story. Okay. Read the, read the outline of the story. And understand what is the story and what actually uh, you know is the sequence of the story now the second point is you have to develop the points of the outline into a complete sentence all right now your teacher will be giving you some points or the outline or short phrases but you have to make a complete sentence in your mind and you can just check how can you develop these points and then you can create your own sentences in your mind now children, the third important point is follow the outline of the story. Now how to follow and what you are supposed to do when you are actually going to follow the outline of the story. The first point is follow the sequence in which the points are given. These points form the series of your events in the story. So make sure you are not going to skip any of the sequence children. The reason is if you skip the sequence, your story may not be formed properly. So make sure that the sequence of the story is correctly formed. The next one is do not omit any part of the outline. 
uh, you could come across a situation children when you are not able to understand one of the line or one of the point so it's not necessary that you know you have to omit that particular outline that means you have to skip that outline make sure that you're going to add that particular you know part in that particular story as well the reason is if you omit or if you skip this particular part your story will not be formed okay next important point is do not include unrelated or unnecessary events that may change the story completely so for example if your teacher has given you one outline you can't add your own unrelated some kind of part in the story you cannot add your unnecessary events which you like in the story you have to go only as per the outline which is given in the story okay now let us go to the next point now let us come to the important part that is beginning middle and ending of the story now every story should consist of these three important part there has to be a beginning of the story it should consist of middle part of the story and then the end of the story now you have to also include details to make the story very interesting and enjoyable so yes if you want to make your story very interesting very enjoyable you can add some kind of conversation in it so that you know the reader will actually enjoy and really relate that story in front of you know uh, the mind so the reader will think that yes this story is really good and this is actually giving a life to the story right now let us come to the next one now write the story in the past tense yes children make sure that you're always going to write the story in the past tense only even if the out outline may be provided in the present tense yes children there might be a situation wherein your outline given by the teacher could be in the present tense but don't worry even if it's in present tense you have to make sure that you are going to write the story in past tense only make sure children you are going to write the story only in past tense right now the next one introduce dialogues or conversation to make the story engaging yes this is very very important point if you want to bring a life into a story make sure that you are going to add few dialogues or conversation to make your story more engaged and more interesting so that your reader is going to stick to the storyline and your reader is also going to enjoy the story all right now every story that you write it should consist of a title so now how will you select a title of the story so choose a title that is related to the main character or events of the story okay do not go out of the uh, track and do not go think something beyond the storyline you see uh, giving a title to the story is really very very easy you have to stick to the character or maybe the event of the story and you have to give the title now how will you give the title let us see you have to avoid using quotation marks and punctuation marks in the title unless it is a sentence yes children your title should not consist of any kind of quotation marks and punctuations whenever you are giving any title to the story now let us take one example write the title using title casing only yes children you have to use title casing now what i mean by this now this means that the main words begin with capital letters yes children the main words begin with capital letters now you can see one example we're given here the hare and the tortoise now you can check how the title has been given so yes children this is how you have to give the title to your story now what i want to do is i will be giving you a wonderful outline of one of the story as an example 
and I will also tell you how we can convert that outline into a wonderful story. So stick with me children and make sure that you are going to write down the important points as well. So now children, I have given you an example of outline of the story. So in what we will be doing is we will read this outline, the entire outline first. And then we will try to understand what the story is all about. And then we will start making the sequence of the story. Now let us read the story. An ant is weary and thirsty, walks along the bank of a river, stops to quench its thirst, strong rush of water, carries away, drowning, of, drowning the ant, dove on a tree, plucks a leaf, lets it fall, ant climbs on the leaf. This is just half of the outline, children. Let us read this slide once again. An ant is weary and thirsty, walks along the bank of a river, stops to quench his thirsts, strong rush of water, carries away, drowning the ant, dove on a tree, plucks a leaf, lets it fall, ant climbs on the leaf. Now the remaining outline of the story. Floats safety safely to the bank. Floats safely to the bank. Thanks the dove. A bird catcher under the tree. Lays lime twigs. Makes a trap to catch the dove. And stings his foot. Bird catcher cries in pain. Throws the twigs. Noise draws dove's attention. Dove flies away. Okay, we'll read this storyline once again properly. All right. An ant is weary and thirsty, walks along the bank of a river, stops to quench its thirst. Strong rush of water carries away, drowning the ant. Dove on a tree plucks a leaf. Let's it fall and climbs on the leaf, floats safely to the bank, thanks the dove, a bird catcher under the tree, lays lime twigs, makes a trap to catch the dove, and stings his foot, bird catcher cries in pain, throws the twigs, noise draws dove's attention, dove flies away. Yes, children. So now we are very much clear with the outline of the story. What is the story all about? Now, what we will be doing is we are going to complete these sentences which are incomplete. We are going to add a life in the story, right? So let us see how we are going to do it. So now children, with the help of the outline of the story, we can actually make an imagination or create a picture in our mind or in our thoughts. So this is how uh, we can imagine, yes, there is a dove, there is one um, ant, okay, and ant is actually on the leaf. So now we know what is the story all about. So let us quickly start, first thing, give the title to the story. Now the title that we have given is the ant and the dove, okay, it's a wonderful title. And see how your teacher has mentioned the title. A is in a capital and D is also in the capital letters. Now, as discussed, your story will have three parts. So the first part is the beginning, then the middle part and then the end part. So let us start the beginning. Now, we have to give a life to the story, right? So you can actually uh, add your own imagination or thoughts in your story as well. So yes, what we have done is let us start with the story. On a hot summer day, an ant was walking along the bank of a river. The ant was tired and very thirsty. It went to the bank of a river to have a drink of water. The rush of water in the river was strong and the ant got carried away. So now let us come to the middle part. A dove sitting on a tree overhead saw the ant was drowning so 
the dove plucked a leaf from the and let it fall into the river close to the ant. The dove said to the ant, yeah, we have added dialogue over here. That's a conversation. Let us see what is that. The dove said to the ant, climb on to the leaf. It will keep you from drowning and you can float safely to the bank of the river. Yes, so here comes the conversation. The ant climbed on to the leaf and floated safely to the bank of the river. The ant was very grateful to the dove and said, again one more dialogue, thank you for saving my life. Later that day, the ant saw a bird catcher. The bird catcher came and stood under the tree. Yes. Now, what happened next? He laid lime twigs and was making a trap to catch the dove. The ant saw this and realized that the bird catcher was trying to lay a trap to catch its friend, the dove. Who was ant's friend? It was dove. So, the ant stung the bird catcher on the leg. The bird catcher let out a painful yelp and threw down the twigs. The dove heard the noise and flew away. Yes, children, now the ant. So in this way, the ant repaid the dove by saving its life from danger. So now you must have seen children how uh, the friendship between ant and the dove was explained in a very nice way in this particular story. And yes, we have added conversation and dialogue as well. And what was the end? The end says that in this way, the ant repaid the dove by saving its life from danger. So now what have you learned from the story, children? So what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is every good deed we do for others will come back to us. Every good deed we do for others will come back to us. That means whatever good things we do to other people, it will definitely come back to us. So yes, children, make sure that your each and every story consists of a moral of the story. The reason is in your examination, this also carries marks, right? So you're not supposed to forget to write the moral of the story. This is how it shows what you have learned from the story, right? So now let us go to the next one. So now children, I'm very sure that you know what is the format of the story writing, right? So generally your story writing format should be uh, something like this, which I have mentioned over here. Now you can write the story in 150 to 200 words. Now, first thing is you have to give a title to the story. It could be two to three words. It could be two words. It could be three or four words as well. Then next comes the beginning of the story. Now how to write the beginning of the story is set up your action plan or the plot. Give background of the story that catches the attention of the reader. It's very important children. Now the next part is the middle part. Now in the middle part what you can explain is the incident which has taken place or events. You can explain in detail. You can also actually make sure you can add some more details which is related to the story and grab the attention of the reader. Then your end is basically the climax of the story. You can make sure that you know the story is having a happy ending or a sad ending. It depends on you. Then the moral of the story. The moral is very very important. It is an important part in the story writing. So it is a compulsory part in your story. You can't skip the moral of the story. The reason is you need to tell the teacher or the writer what you have learned from the story. Okay. Now children you have to make be sure that your story writing is always uh, you're going to write in the past tense only now the story uh, Example which I have already done for you was completely in a past tense. All right, you can Whenever you want you can go back and check the story once again now children for your examination you can have uh, 
two types of a story. One is the outline of the story. The other one could be a picture story. Now we have already done how the outline of the story has to be continued or has to be written. Now next is the picture story. Let us go and understand what is a picture story all about. So dear children, don't you think so that if the outline of the story is given to you by the teacher, then it's really easy to write a story. Yes, the only thing is we will be actually taking care of the sequence of the story, the event of the story, the character of the story and one important point is the title of the story. Yes, and one thing which is compulsory that is the moral of the story. So now children, this was uh, the topic was with regards to the outline of the story. Now what we will be doing is we are going to continue with part two of story writing. Now your question is what are we going to do in part two? So yes children we will be meeting you again with the picture story for story writing and believe me picture story is also a wonderful format which I'm very sure that you all are going to love it. So children till that time you can practice the outline of the story format and your teacher will meet you again with picture story format. So see you soon. Till that time you can practice your story writing. So take care children. Bye bye.